It was later estimated to have been flying at seven miles up. It was apparently enormous. Before a plane could scramble into the air to identify the object, it went behind a cloud and disappeared. They understood after the report to the government that they really took it seriously. I say seriously because the film was taken away. It was declared completely secret. The film was immediately locked up in KGB vaults and never seen by the public. That is, until we got a hold of it. During a five-month investigation, Primetime obtained over a thousand pages of documents collected by the old KGB. We spoke to dozens of Russian scientists, government officials, and military men. We now know that the entire Soviet Armed Forces, a total of 15 million people over 10 years, was involved in a UFO study that turned up 40 major incidents, including one that prompted fears of accidental nuclear war. As a result of the study, hundreds of UFOs were recorded, and some were photographed. Some of the reports and some of the photos were clearly faked, but in other cases there were multiple witnesses of varying backgrounds. For more than 30 years, the Soviet approach to UFOs was colored by Cold War paranoia. At first, we believed UFOs were something made by the Americans. But when we got reports that the Americans suspected us of the same thing, then we realized it was some unexplained phenomenon. An unexplained phenomenon seen as a possible threat to the Soviet Union. September 20th, 1977, Petrozovotsk. Hundreds of people in the region report seeing a UFO shaped like a giant jellyfish. One artist painted what he saw. Levgin Dillis, a scientist from Russia's top astronomical institute, collected eyewitness reports and used them to estimate the altitude and the trajectory of the UFO. It turned out that it was something like seven miles above the ground. It could not be a satellite, polar lights, an aircraft, or a meteorite. I don't know what it could have been. The military could not explain Petrozovotsk. That worried the leaders of the Soviet Union. What were these UFOs? Who sent them here? The decision was made to conduct a gigantic study. All Soviet military personnel were ordered to report in depth about any sightings or contact with UFOs. Over a 10-year period, 15 million people told Moscow about everything unusual that they saw, photographed, or monitored on radar. October 4th, 1982, Bielokorovice, Ukraine. Near a sleepy farming village, our search brought us to perhaps the most frightening case of all, an incident that could have started an accidental nuclear war. I was riding a motorcycle not far from here. I saw a large object in the air. It had a perfect geometric shape. Every person we spoke to in Bielokorovice said they saw a flying saucer on that day. They told us it was huge, about 900 feet in diameter. For hours, it hovered over the nearby ballistic missile base, where Lieutenant Colonel Vladimir Platunov worked as a missile engineer. It looked just like a flying saucer, the way they show them in the movies. No portholes, nothing. The surface was absolutely even. The disc made a beautiful turn like this, on the edge, just like a plane. There was no sound. I had never seen anything like that before. Lieutenant Colonel Platunov took me to the ruins of what was then a missile silo with a nuclear warhead pointed at the United States. It was dismantled three years ago under an arms reduction treaty. Platunov was in the bunker on that day 12 years ago. In this room were dual control panels for the missile, each hooked up to Moscow. What happened next so alarmed the Soviet military leadership that a four-man commission was sent the next day to investigate including Colonel Boris Sokolov. During this period, for a short time, signal lights on both the control panels suddenly turned on. The lights showing that missiles were preparing for launching, as could normally only happen if an order was transmitted from Moscow. No one had touched any buttons. No one had entered any codes. And yet, as the UFO hovered over the base, 
the control panel showed the missiles were preparing to launch. For 15 agonizing seconds, the base lost control of its nuclear weapons. February 23, 1988, six years later, Kapustin Yar near the Caspian Sea in southern Russia. It is Soviet Army and Navy Day, a national holiday. An unidentified flying object appears on the radar screen protecting the military base. As the UFO moves towards central Russia, the entire Soviet anti-ballistic missile radar grid goes on alert. Several times, fighter pilots are ordered to fire on the object. Each time, the pilot would report that as he prepared to fire, the target had disappeared. Finally, the UFO went away for good. What were the standing orders, if there were any, for the military, if they saw a, a UFO, a, a flying object that they could not identify as friend or foe, were the orders to shoot it down or to let it go? There were orders to watch them until they presented a threat to the military. If there was such a threat, they were to be destroyed. March 2nd, 1991, Leningrad Airport. On the control tower balcony, air traffic controller Valery Rapitsky. I went out for a smoke. It was rather dark and suddenly a very bright pulsating star caught my eye. I could see by its altitude that it was too low to be a star. It was some shining object, I told the guys. Then we looked at the radar screens and saw that it was hanging over Sosnovy Bor, where we have a nuclear power station. Look, guys, a UFO, a UFO. What the f These are the actual tapes made on that day. They've never been broadcast before. Listen to their voices. You can hear the excitement of the controllers about what they're seeing. Is it single or are there a few of them? Looks like a group. We have two or three spots now. The controllers have never seen anything like it. Look how fast it's moving. What is the speed? What is it? It's 3,154 kilometers per hour. That is almost 2,000 miles an hour. No plane known to man can travel at that speed from a dead stop. 40 miles away at the Sosnovy Bor nuclear power plant, workers run outside to gaze at what is hovering above them. What did you think when you saw it? That it was very beautiful. Top Russian scientists who have looked into UFOs tend to be skeptics. I showed astrophysicist Yuli Platov the film in Riga of the Silver Triangle. This one is a research balloon, a triangle-shaped French balloon. No doubt, absolutely. This is a balloon that can go to 18 miles up. The sides of the triangle are 150 feet each. The French government confirms such research balloons were in production by 1968, but we checked, and the only two said to have been launched in the region went up the month after the Riga UFO was seen. Throughout the Cold War, experts say over 95% of all UFO sightings in Russia can readily be explained as man-made, some of their own top-secret space and weapons research programs. Officially, for many years, this launching pad at Plesetsk didn't exist. And remember the 1977 Petrozavodsk UFO? Some experts believe it was really just a cloud of missile exhaust from a secret launch. Even skeptics, though, admit that some phenomena defy explanation. And every year, hundreds spend their summers camped out near places where UFOs have allegedly been seen, trying to photograph and otherwise monitor their activities. Millions in this country believe in the power of faith healers, signs of the zodiac, ghosts. During three years of living in Moscow, I've learned that people here are more willing than Americans to suspend disbelief. Scientific proof isn't everything. There is a mystical side to the Russian soul. Many people tell me they are convinced not only that life exists elsewhere in this universe, but that our Earth is being visited. They are eager to make contact. And by the way, when we first did this story in October, a researcher at one of Russia's leading aviation institutes told us he is currently using old pictures to reconstruct a flying saucer based on these sightings in an ongoing study of UFOs. John Quinones visits the dangerous underground passage these kids call home. Seven years? You've been here seven years? In the sky.